it's time to continue with economics 2.3 uh, we're going to be discussing FOPs factors of production the marginal uh, the the marginal cost and the average average cost uh, let's begin with FOPs an FOP is a factor of production. Now, you know, factor is one of many, and then production is, well, obviously we're producing goods and services, right? So, we have four of these. We have land, labor, capital, and enterprise. Depending on your economics teacher, your economics syllabus, or the economics textbook you're working with, these might be, you know, they're always defined the same way, or at least so that the definition basically means the same, even if it's written in different words. But these may be called something other than factors of production, and themselves, for example, instead of enterprise, you might have something like risk, and instead of capital, you might have uh, money. And this is what, the, you know, land, what this is. This is basically, you know, the land you're working on. So this is either the land for your primary resources, you know, for, for wherever you're exploiting, uh, let's say, coal or, you know, you're cutting down trees, or just the land that you're, you're building your buildings on, or even just, you know, your, your buildings. And then the labor. So land is, is self-explanatory. I want to say that land is, is land. Even though, you know, this makes little sense, but this is, is very, very self-explanatory. Labor, on the other hand, uh, this is your workforce. So these are the people that you're hiring who are working for you. These are all of your managers and your executives um, and, you know, factory workers. When you're running a company or a business, you've got people working for you. This is your labor force, your workforce. Capital, and, you know, notice how it's spelled with an A. A capital is spelled with an O is, for example, the capital city of, uh, of a country. Now, capital is spelled with an A. This is just, this is money. This is the money you're putting in, the money you're borrowing, the money you're spending on, you know, just running a business. Whereas enterprise, this is your risk and your risk management. Manage, no, that's not going to fit. Management. Basically, what, uh, what your enterprise is, if you're an entrepreneur, and I don't know how to spell that, so I'm not going to write it, but if you're an entrepreneur, what you have is you have risk. You're going into a business, and you're saying, hey, I'm potentially going to make money by selling, I don't know, crayons, right? Or, I don't know, pencils and then markers. I'm going to, you know, produce these kinds of goods. And let's say you're, you're, you're over here, right? And there is this giant country. This is country X. And in country Y, you've got maybe a, a, you know, a factory you know, producing your steam. And basically what you're doing is you're producing, you're, you're making your products. You're making your products. And to make these products, you're using all four factors of production. So your factory is on land. And then you've got labor working inside of the factory. So first of all, your factory's on land. You've got labor, you've got your people inside of the factory, not only producing, but coming up with ideas, uh, putting together things, you know, just managing everything. You've got capital, and capital is the entire, you know, investment. This is the money that you have to put in to be able to not only, you know, buy the building, buy the land sitting on, build all of it, pay all of your workers, right? This is the man that you, this is the money that you're investing. And an enterprise, some don't consider this to be a factor of production, although in our IB economic syllabus, we have enterprise as one of the FOPs. And this means that you're a person, you're, you're the entrepreneur, or there is an entrepreneur, who decided that building this factory on this land, hiring these people and paying them, is going to make him money. This is going to be you know, efficient, this is going to be economically viable. So you're taking your products and you're marketing them to country X, uh, you're selling them somewhere inside of the country to, and you know, not necessarily inside of a country, you can sell these products internationally. 
but they're being sold, you are potentially making a profit. And going from uh, you know, primary resources to secondary to tertiary resources, you're using your FOPs. And I will be explaining the, you know, the types of resources in a different video, as from what I remember, they are uh, topic one or topic two in the syllabus. All right, so FOPs, done. Now we get to talk about marginal. And we've got a couple different kinds of marginal. There are marginal costs, and uh, there are marginal, uh, marginal, margin, I, marginal marginalities. There's no such word. Basically, we're here just to explain what the word marginal means. Let's say that you have a budget of one thousand dollars, and for one thousand dollars, you can produce. 20, uh, let's say 20 keyboards. That's what I'm looking at right now. You can produce 20 keyboards. If anyone is wondering, I'm actually drawing this using my keyboard. Uh, I'm a pro gamer. You can just use WASD, download this fancy program, and you can draw things with a keyboard. So for $1,000, you can produce 20 keyboards. And the marginal, the, the marginal cost is going to be the cost of producing the 21st keyboard. And let's say if you produce 20, you're paying a thousand. If you produce 21, this doesn't necessarily have to be proportional. Uh, let's say you're paying, or you know, you, your costs of production, the costs of your factors of production, uh, 1,120 for the 21st keyboard. What this means, marginal, the definition of, of marginal is the the last or rather the cost uh, the cost of an additional or you know, additional or the last good or service produced this is the de definition of something that is marginal and in this case, if you're producing these keyboards, you know, these super fancy keyboards that are fairly expensive, um, if producing a 21st keyboard makes it so that you have to pay 1,120 uh, in total for your FOPs, that means that you know, take away a thousand because remember, this is when you made 20, this is when you made 21, and you're looking at that additional unit. This means that you're paying 120 dollars for the 21st keyboard. So the marginal marginal cost of producing a keyboard, uh, let's go down here, the marginal cost of producing a keyboard equals $120. This is not necessarily, what, you're not taking your total you know, number of keyboards produced, dividing them by the, you know, the total money spent and getting your average keyboard cost. That's not the same because when and this is uh, why I mentioned in the previous video that this may be a bit complicated, maybe not necessarily complicated, but not very easy to understand. Because when you're, you know, producing your last or your additional unit, you know, of production or a unit of output, you have to, you know, think about a, a couple different things. Not only do you have to extend the time that you're producing, like, you know, maybe it takes an hour to create a keyboard. So instead of working from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you're now working to 6 p.m. And maybe that time is worth something. Maybe you have to find additional resources and have them, you know, shipped, uh, you know, especially just to make this one keyboard. And so you're paying extra. And that's why the marginal cost, when firms look at, you know, is it worth my time? And is it worth, you know, all the hassle? But most importantly, does it make economic sense? Am I making more money if I'm making more things? What they do then is they look at the marginal cost. And until the marginal cost is lower than the cost of production, so until the marginal cost, until the marginal cost is lower than the cost of production, so the cost of all of the FOPs, it is worth it to make, you know, it is worth it to produce. So it is worth it to increase output. To, to, and, and this kind of error going up, this is increase.
this is going to be in increase. Now, you know, on the other hand, when it costs more to get all the factors of production, so land, labor, capital, and enterprise, if it's too risky, you know, to produce things because you don't know if you're going to sell it, well, you're not going to be, you know, making more. If it costs more to pay someone to make it, then you can actually, you know, make by selling it on the market, you're not going to make it. On the other hand, uh, money, it's very important to know when we're talking about the factors of production, money has a certain, it has a value, but money can be considered to be expensive or to be cheap. And this is depending on interest rates, and that is not for this video because we're now talking about marginal. Uh, I'll later explain, well, I'll actually write down in a second to, to remember to actually make the video. It's very interesting, if, at least for me it was kind of hard to understand, uh, it took a while to, to figure out that money actually could be expensive. Uh, so, so in, at least in this relationship, as long as the marginal cost is lower than the, the cost of the factors of production, or in this case, you know, you can look at the total costs, um, then then it's worth it to, to produce more, so a company is going to be expanding. Now, our third and final, uh, our third and final question for this video, that's over here, it's in marginal, now we're looking at average costs. Average costs, which I should have included in the last video, ah, this is, this is fairly, fairly simple. Uh, that is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Sorry for that. So average cost, going back to total cost, right? Remember, we did total cost equals total fixed cost plus total uh, total variable cost. So when we take total fix or, or total cost, we divide it by the quantity, and this is the quantity of output. This is equal to total fixed costs divided by the quantity of output. Uh, plus total variable cost divided by the quantity of output. Basically what this means is you're taking the quantity, so the number of of goods and or services services produced produced. When you look at the you know the number the total sum of goods and services produced, you're getting the average cost. And the the way we're going to be writing this is that average total cost, right? Average total cost is equal to total cost over quantity. Same with average fixed cost or average total fixed cost, but it'd be best to write it like this. So average fixed cost equals uh, total fixed cost over quantity, and the same if we're looking at variable. You just, you know, it, this is going to be variable instead of fixed. So now we've looked at, uh, what have we looked at? We've looked at factors of production, which I will later explain in more depth, because just for now, this is all you need to understand. Uh, uh, we've looked at marginal, what it means if something is marginal, and we've looked at average costs.